Hello, my name is Colin Grant Adams, originally from Oban on the west coast of Scotland, and we're listening to the Irish and Celtic Music Podcast 579.
Welcome to the Irish and Celtic Music Podcast, helping you celebrate Celtic culture through music. I am Mark Gunn. I'm an Atlanta-based musician and podcaster, and you can find a link to all the artists in the show notes, along with show times and chapters for each song when you visit our website at CelticMusicPodcast.com. If you hear music you love, please email the artists to let them know you heard them on the Irish and Celtic Music Podcast. I was putting together this week's show when I realized the show was very instrumental heavy. Until very recently, the Celtic supergroup Lunasa played entirely instrumental music. So I figured out why not just make this episode another fully instrumental episode of great Celtic music since I'm featuring them later on in the show. <laughs> Lunasa is also performing at Irish Fest Atlanta next weekend. The Irish and Celtic Music Podcast is a proud sponsor of this year's festival. Tickets are on sale. You can head on over to irishfestatlanta.org to find performance times, workshops, and lots more. I think there are still tickets available, so go do that. The show was introduced by Colin Grant Adams, and uh, I am looking for some more audio intros. If you would like to introduce an episode of the show, drop me a line, CelticPodcast at gmail.com. It's a pretty simple process. I'll tell you all the details when you send me that email. All right, we kicked off the show with the Carol Sisters with Jigstorm from their album Daybreak. Next up is the Here and Now with Little Monster from Ladybird.
After the Here and Now came Mirant with To Carolyn from their album Fells. Ohm was after that with Dr. O'Neill's from The Gold Ring. And we finished up the set with Kennedy's Kitchen that was sleeping under the table set. It's from their album A Pocket Full of Lent. And it was also featured on our Victims of Irish Music compilation CD, which is one of the things that uh, helps fund Irish Fest Atlanta and other Celtic festivals and events. Uh, a portion of the sales from those albums, as well as from Patreon pledges, those go to Celtic nonprofits. And then I donate to things like Irish Fest Atlanta. We get to sponsor a big event like that. So it's fantastic. If you want to support the podcast, um, there are two ways quickly. One is to support the artist because Kennedy's Kitchen is fantastic. So go check them out. But another way is to, you know, buy a compilation or become a patron or buy other merch. Every little bit helps to keep this podcast running and uh, keep promoting it. So do that. I want your feedback. What are you doing today while listening to the podcast? You can send a written comment along with a picture of what you're doing while listening. Email a voicemail message to KelticPodcast at gmail.com. Fletch emailed, Hi Mark, I have no idea if you've ever played anything by Castle Bay, but they're a friend of a friend, so I figured I should let you know. Thanks. Well, if you actually check, the, I think somewhere at the beginning of the podcast creation, uh, the, back in 2005, 2006, I remember I had them on the podcast quite a bit, as well as on the Renaissance Festival podcast. Uh, so I have a lot of their music. Uh, I haven't heard from them in a decade at least. So make sure you drop them an email. And I will reach out to them as well. But if you want to get music on this podcast, the best way to do that is to say, drop your favorite band, Celtic band, an email or artist or whoever. Say, hey, submit your music to the Irish and Celtic Music Podcast. It's really easy. You go to 4 That's the number 4 And uh, I'll get you on the show. So I hope to uh, get that added soon. Shell O'Toole emailed, Hi Mark, as I was listening to the Jigs and Reels of Ireland, number 576, I was inspired to share the episode with a session I attend at the Munster Arms Hotel in Ballarat. The session plays some great tunes, and some of today's tunes would certainly be embraced. I only got to write down the name of one tune that I love, Hector the Hero by Celtic Grass. I have a 15-minute floor spot at a folk night in Creswick tonight. I find listening to your show helps calm my nerves and focus on my musicality. It's off to rehearse a few songs for me now. Enjoy the weekend, Slancha. Thank you so much, Shell. That's fantastic. I, I wish you all the luck at your floor spot uh, in Creswick. That, that's fantastic. I, I went to one folk club in just outside of London many, many years ago, and it was a wonderful experience. I have never experienced any uh, folk. We don't have folk clubs like that that I've seen in the United States, and it was a really cool experience. If you ever get to go to a folk club in in um, the UK, I go do it. Uh, there's some brilliant stuff there. I learned a, a great song, actually. One of the songs from my, my CD, uh, Kilted for Her Pleasure, it's called The, the Mower. That's what it was. I, I heard it in, the, in that event. And I was like, I got to find this song and I got to record it. And I did. <laughs> and so good luck with that. I hope you have uh, many more wonderful evenings playing music. And I love to see the people are out there playing music, either at an Irish session or at a song session. Um, and if you haven't, if there isn't one around you, go start one. It's a great way to get people involved and, and to meet people in your community. It's a great communal activity, which is, you know, celebrating Celtic culture through music. That's kind of all about building a community. So finally, Kinfolk replied to the Celtic Music Magazine request for more bands. Hi, Mark. I got some bands for you. Here they are. The Border Collies, The Cross Jacks, Wild Blue Yonder, Celtic Machinations, and Runa. Have a great day. Thank you so much for sending that. Uh, Kinfolk is a fantastic band in themselves, but um, it's always nice to find new music. And of course, several of these bands, uh, three of these bands, I've not heard of. Uh, the Cross Jacks, Wild Blue Yonder, and Celtic Machinations. So drop them an email, let them know, and I'm going to see about reaching out to them as well. All right, let's get back to the music. Next up is Jared Bogle with The Greenfields of Glentown and The Earl's Chair, set of reels from his album, The Old Road Home. And of course, he will be at Irish Fest Atlanta. So go check him out there. <laughs> Thank you. 
After Jared Bogle came Kiana with Andro set from Rubicon, and that was followed by Seed with Twig from their album, Faye. I don't do many interviews for the podcast. I prefer having stories, but I had a wonderful opportunity to actually do interviews with a couple bands that are performing at Irish Fest Atlanta. So uh, this week I have Colin Farrell from the band Lunasa, and next week I have um, another interview from Alton, which I'm really excited to share about. But first, we're going to kick it off with Colin Farrell. He's been playing with the band for many years now, and he's going to share the story of Lunasa and The Last Pint. Here's Colin. Lunasa uh, started back in probably 1996. Uh, Trevor Hutchinson, the bass player, he's uh, played with loads of great bands like The Water Boys and Sharon Shannon, and he'd just been to Australia a few months before, and some promoters in Australia contacted him and asked him would he put a band together to come out to Australia. So himself... And Sean Smith went over with Donna Hennessy. And originally, I think it was just called Sean Smith and Friends. Sean's the amazing fiddle player with Luna. So I'm lucky enough to fill in for Sean because he's a, a doctor in Ireland and he, he hasn't been able to tour in America for the last number of years. But uh, So they went to Australia, Sean Smith and Friends originally. And then shortly after that, uh, they had, to do, had another few gigs coming up and they had to get a name. So they decided on the name Lunasa, which is uh, named after one of the... On the Celtic calendar, there's four, I suppose, festivals throughout throughout the year or seasons, maybe. And Lunasa is one of them. It's celebrated the Harvest Festival in Ireland. So they decided on the name Lunasa. It's also the Irish for the month of August. So, yeah, that's how they started the band back in 1996. They did tour in 1997. And then originally it was Sean, Trevor, Michael McGoldrick, a uh, brilliant musician from Manchester. He taught me a lot. And uh, John McSherry and uh, Donna Hennessy, Trevor. And then uh, shortly after that, Kevin Crawford joined the band and then Killian. And like I said, I've been probably playing in America with them for the last 12 or 13 years. Did you get in through, uh, who was it, Michael Goldrick, you said, Mick Goldrick? Well, I grew up in Manchester. Mike, Michael taught me, basically, when I was growing okay. up. I used to go to him for lessons. Well, I say lessons, we used to just meet up for an hour and just uh, have to crack and play music. But, uh, yeah. yeah, he's an amazing musician. But it was, uh, I don't know, it wasn't through Michael. Michael had left the band a long time before that. But I, I knew all the musicians from just festivals and traveling around and be, uh, just good friends with Kevin. And, and then he just asked me one year uh, to fill in because Sean couldn't come. And that was, and I've been doing that ever since. Any tracks that are really some of your most popular tracks? Well, there's loads, but one of the things to mind is probably the last pint. Uh, one of the signature sounds of Lunasa is uh, the low whistles when, when uh, Sean, uh, Kevin and Killian, they all, they all play like maybe the F whistle. And uh, this track, is, uh, it was written by a, a great French guitarist called Pierre Ben Suzanne. And uh, it, he wrote it after a trip to Ireland in the month of March. Mm-hmm. Uh, he went over looking for music. And unfortunately, most of the good musicians uh, were in America during that month, making money on the back of St. Patrick. So uh, he went to loads of different pubs looking for music, couldn't find any, but in each pub he used to have a few pints of Guinness. And then on the way back to France on the ferry, he was uh, he wrote this tune and he was so sick from the drink, he called the tune The Last Pint. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, very sad tune. <laughs> that seems but, uh, yeah, but it's just with the whistles and uh, and the bass and the guitar, it's just like it had that signature lunacy sound. You'd know straight away who it was.
Thank you, patrons of the podcast, because of your kind and generous support, this show comes out at least four times a month. Your generosity funds the creation, promotion, and production of the show. It allows us to attract new listeners and to help our community grow. And all patrons are seeing bonus episodes, a bunch of them, coming over the next two months. So if you want some bonus best of episodes then you want to become a patron of the podcast right now. Special thanks to our Celtic legends, Marty Myers, Brenda, Megan Walker, Dan McDade, Carol Burrill, Miranda Nelson, Nancy Barnett, Kevin Long, Linda McNeil, Annie Lorkowski, Travis Sinzaki, and Sean Kelly. Thank you all so much for your amazing generosity. These are wonderful people. They pledge $25 or more per month to support this podcast, and that is just a mind-blowing amount uh, of support. So thank you so much for your generosity. Here is your three-step plan to support the podcast. Number one, go to our Patreon page. Number two, decide how much you want to pledge every week. One dollar, five dollars, twenty-five dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, (laughs) twenty-five. Make sure to cap how much you want to spend per month. And then number three, keep listening to the Irish and Celtic Music Podcast to celebrate Celtic culture through music. You can become a generous patron of the podcast on Patreon by following the link at songhinge.com. That takes you right over to Patreon. Claire Sands is up next with the Malacon reel from her album, The Basement Sessions EP.
After Claire Sands came Sharon Shannon with Bjorn Again Polka. That's from her album Out the Gap. And then Drum Spider with the Braves of Telemet from their album Soon and Mona. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you want Celtic music news in your inbox, the Celtic Music Magazine is a quick and easy way to plug yourself into more great Celtic culture. Subscribe and you'll get 34 Celtic MP3s for free. And don't forget to vote in the Celtic Top 20 for 2022. This is our way of finding the best songs and artists each year. You can vote for as many songs and tunes that inspire you in each episode. Your vote helps me create next year's Best Celtic Music of 2022 episode. But you do need to be a patron, so there's many great reasons to sign up today. We're going to finish up the show with Runa. This is the star of Monster Set. It's from their live album. I will be back again next week with another fantastic episode. Talk to you soon. Slancha.
The Irish and Celtic Music Podcast was produced by Mark Gundy Keltfather. The show was edited by Mitchell Peterson with graphics by Miranda Nelson Designs. Visit our website to subscribe to the podcast and our mailing list. You'll find links to all of the artists in this episode. You'll get access to our best of this year playlist and you will better connect with your Celtic heritage. The show is supported by our patrons of the podcast on Patreon. Subscribe to get bonus podcasts and vote in the Celtic Top 20. The Irish and Celtic Music Podcast is here to build our diverse Celtic community and help the incredible artists who so generously share their music with you. Finally, please tell one friend about this podcast. Word of mouth is the absolute best way to support any creative endeavor. Promote Celtic culture through music at CelticMusicPodcast.com.